Welcome to episode 22 of Crave the Book. Today, we are going to be covering chapters 18 through 23 of Tracy Wolf's Crush. And today's episode, it, it doesn't have a lot of content just because not a whole lot happens in these chapters. However, our fan theories that we have for the series in the spoiler section are very, very long and very, very detailed. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, episode 22. I wish I could say that a lot of awesome and interesting things happen during this episode, <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, no, no, these, this, these chapters, we thought about going and reading more but it kind of transitions into a new scene. Uh, but we make up for the lack of activity taking place with a bunch of fan theories at the end because dun, 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 in exactly one week from today or one week from when we're recording this episode. So I guess it'll be less than a week when this airs tomorrow. Um, court's going to come out. So basically, yeah, so excited. yay! Um, basically, next week's episode is still going to cover Crush simply because um, Amber and I will not be able to finish court in a day. <laughs> I wish well, that we, we could. Will. Well, well, we will. As long but... as she says the book is going to be, <laughs> though. Like, yeah. Also, um, so have you pre-ordered it yes. on Amazon? Okay, so it's not just it, it releases, we have to wait for it to arrive. Well, I'm going to go, so here's my thought. Um, I think I might cancel my Amazon order and go up to the bookstore <laughs> and buy it. Copy. Yeah, because mine's not supposed to arrive until the 7th. I'm like, what's the point? That's the, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up and just buy it because it'll be available at Barnes & Noble and Target and Books A Million if I want, if I, you know, want to go get it. So I'm just going to do gonna that. I'm going to have to check which stores in Britain it'll be in because I have no idea. Are you going to try to get it early? Like, I, I'm going to maybe see whether Waterstone, okay, they, they must, but at the same time, I haven't been in a bookshop <laughs> in a very, very long time because I order everything on online. So, if they have it at Waterstones, I, I might go on the day. I was going to say, you could also, we can read it on Kindle. I keep forgetting that we can get yeah. it, like, at, at midnight or something. Maybe we'll, maybe I'll do that, and I'll also, I'll just read my physical copy when it comes. But the thing is, <laughs> if I go to Target, I can get the Vampire Edition. If I read it, the version from Amazon isn't going to be a special edition. It's just going to be one of the regular ones. So now I'm thinking, man, I should just go to Target. Because it's not like... Our, our target isn't going to sell out of them. Our target's pretty, it's small. So anyway, um, so our plan for next week is to do our, our crush episode. And then the week after, we will be doing just a court overview because by then we will have completed it. Um, so basically, if you guys have not finished it, we will do it just like we do any other episode where spoilers will be more towards the end of the episode. We'll do the howl. Um, obviously, it, it, most of it's going to be spoilers. I said towards the end of the episode. That's not true. It's probably going to be within the first few minutes. But that way, if you haven't <laughs> finished it, um, you can you can skip past any spoilers or you can come back and listen to the episode later. But that'll give everybody a week to read it. That way, the episode isn't spoiling everything. And, um, and we then also it might have a, a note to the, the listeners as well at the beginning of the episode, like we normally do, like court is coming this day, whether there's been any changes to any of the other pre-releases and things like that, we can kind of give it in the beginning of the episode. So you have time to listen for a bit, listen to our dulcet tones and our lovely, lovely voices before the hell. Yeah. And it's not, it's not going to be a normal episode where we cover certain chapters. We're going to kind of cover the book as a whole and then... After we get through uh, Crush and Covet, we will do a full season of the podcast dedicated to court, just mm -hmm. like we do the other books. But we know that you guys are going to have like court fever after after we all read it. So and we're going to want to talk about it. So that's going to give us a good opportunity to just get it all out of our system in one episode. Maybe we'll plan for that episode to be a little longer um, and yeah. we'll, we'll make I a mean, whole thing out of it. 
These episodes are only this much in depth because it's our second read through. So we're actually going through it in a bit more depth, um, making notes on it and things like that. When we're reading through court, we're going to want to devour it cover to cover. We're not going to want to stop start all the time making notes because yeah. we're going to probably be enjoying ourselves. Um, and it also takes you out of the immersion. I don't know where, whether it about you and or not Charlotte, but when you're reading through for the podcast that you kind of like, oh, I want to read more. I can't just keep like right. truncating yeah, these chapters. I want to keep reading or I'm struggling because I've realized that I've read like five chapters and haven't put a single note down and then have to redo it. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I'm thinking is when we read court, let's not talk. I know that's crazy because we talk <laughs> we, almost we every don't day. Talk anyway. <laughs> well, let's not let's not message each other about it at all. Let's come okay. to the podcast without having discussed anything. No words about the book. We're going to pretend. Oh, that's going to be really hard. I know, I know, but I think that that'll allow us we'll to do actually, it for you guys. Exactly we'll do it for you. Yeah, let's and then that you know that gives us uh, that gives us a week to think about it. But no notes. Let's not take any notes. Let's just go into it as two friends who just read this book that we've been waiting on for months, and we'll have a genuine discussion. But um, let's mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, get started with this episode because I have a lot of of theories I want to share. But first of all, uh, Amber, do you want to let them know what sound to listen for in case they haven't finished the series so far and they don't want anything spoiled for them? Yes. So after we have done our chapter based notes, we will be playing the sound of this wolf. Woo. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Um, and once that noise has happened, uh, that means everything after that will probably be a spoiler or a fan theory or something that you don't want to listen to if you have not read past these chapters. Because um, we go right up until cover, even court sometimes. If we've seen like little snippets, like I've noticed that Tracy Wolf has been posting quotes that are driving me insane. She um, poofed them. She, she uh, he poofed he poofed the, the, he poofed the, the wolves. I'm getting so annoyed, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> that sounds like a Flint um, quote to me. He poofed the wolves. Yeah, he poofed the wolves. Um, so yeah, we we don't want anybody to listen to anything that might ruin the books for them or give the game away for any foreshadowing that might have taken place. So please. If you have not got to there, drop out of the podcast. Come back when you have read. Uh, we're not going anywhere. And uh, actually enjoy the books rather than get them spoiled. Yeah. Same with same with next week's episode. Don't don't listen to it and get anything spoiled for yourself just because you want to hear us talk. Save it for a week and uh, listen listen to the week after because we will resume our normal scheduled crush content. But um so leaving off, Grace had gone to the art cottage through the tunnels at two o'clock in the morning because she couldn't sleep and she had this really weird 2 a.m. impulse to go paint. And that's where we left off. But then in these chapters, she wakes up or Macy wakes her up, pulls the blanket off of her. Grace doesn't want to get up. She describes it as almost like coming out of a coma because she's so tired and Macy freaks out, finding Grace covered in blood. Now, I'm just speaking from experience here, Amber, but if I woke up as a female, you know, covered in blood. A female, yeah. I, I've done, I think that we can, we've all, we've all done that before. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just like yep oh. um although i would be slightly concerned if it was all over my shoulders <laughs> yeah yeah like ah, oh, did i just what like, happened it rolled around <laughs> no yeah like it's not a moment of um of, like fear or anything it's uh more of a like ugh. oh damn it <laughs> yeah um e even if like it's not when you're supposed to be on or when it, whatever like it, if it just happens it's not so much of a fear thing but it's the fact that <laughs> Macy's the one that notices it everywhere and then it's like that shock on her face and therefore you know that this is not normal. <laughs> right, It's on, and it's on her belly and on her yeah. face and everything. Yeah, She's just rolled around in it and it's probably cold as well because it's oh. been a few hours. <laughs> Gross. And then and then not knowing mm. who, it, who it came yeah. from. Like that's even, ew, that's like some bloodborne pathogens going around. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the only reason that she knows that it's not hers is because she has a pristine white top on underneath. <laughs> yeah, that's th that's some some thick blood not soaking all the way through. Either that, or she really didn't. Uh, 
she didn't really get a lot yeah. of it. It was like a, it's just like a, a surface splatter. It wasn't it soaked yeah. through. Which makes me think of like what exactly the injuries were because they don't really go into any detail except for the fact that eventually we find out that Cole is in the hospital and he has been drained of a lot of blood and um that doesn't sound like something that gargoyles or grace would do when you first read the series did you think Mm. that it was a hudson thing or a gargoyle thing i thought that hudson had turned into a vampire did you yeah I wasn't and to be honest, I, I was down for it. <laughs> I I wasn't sure. I was I it was one of those things where they talked about his power to manipulate. So I thought maybe he like came into her room and whispered in her ear to go kill. Or kill. like a Tom Riddle kind of thing. Yeah, he's 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 like, like <laughs> she's, painting in blood of cockerels. On yeah, the, she, the enemies of the air beware. <laughs> she's she's just completely oblivious to what has happened, though. And you know, even even later in this, I don't consider this a spoiler because we're not spoiling anything. We just don't get a lot of answer for what a- ever happened with no. Cole. I, I would like that illustrated and, um, out. She's she, she, so she the last thing that she remembers was that she was at the art cottage. And that she was desperately wanting to paint. But then that's the last thing that she remembers before she woke up in bed covered in blood. Um, And it's still not kind of like mentioned where Cole was. Because she even says, well, was he at the art studio? And then it was maybe maybe self-defense happened. But it still doesn't kind of answer for why she can't remember that. And she said that when she tried to remember, it wasn't like she met a wall like she did all the other times when she tried to remember her memory gaps. There is just nothing there. So it's a different kind of memory blank. Yeah. You know, I just realized my notes are all gone. Yeah. I I typed, I typed because it updates automatically so that Starla can see if I've added anything. And I said, did you add any notes? Because I don't think mine's updated. No, (laughs) only yours updated. Mine mine are all gone. (laughs) Do you remember them? Yeah, kind of. I didn't. I didn't take fine. I didn't take very many. Uh, my spoiler ones are still there. Um, <laughs> so they decide, uh, of course, Grace's phone is going crazy. Um, and then that's how they find she's out. That washing, it w- she's washing off all the evidence. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm shocked. I know that obviously she does not want it to stay on her face or anything. I mean, it's already but on her clothes. Washing a, but she's washing away the evidence. And it's like, mm, now, now you're definitely going to be found guilty. Like, As a human, growing up in a human world, the first thing that you do when you have either done something that you know that you're either going to get caught out or you don't want to get caught out having done, the first thing you do is sit and think through things and go, well, okay, if I wash this off, does this make me look more guilty than coming clean and saying, I do not remember anything. I know I'm covered in blood, but I, I, I need to come clean and say that I think something happened. But she just washes it all off and then kind of stashes her clothes in a bag <laughs> like nothing's happened. I mean, it, coming out and it saying, like, nervous. I was covered in blood and my hands were covered in blood, like. Mm. But, and I mean, and with it being a paranormal school, I, she kind of assumes that things like this happen anyway. And Macy's the one who breaks it to her, like, uh, no, things <laughs> like this definitely don't. But they end up going to Uncle Finn's office anyway through Macy's super secret tunnel that's hidden beneath a a painting of seven witches hanging it's kind of morbid but then like she she makes the picture disappear and it's a yellow door covered in stickers and the whole so i i don't remember is it is that the way that her portal looks all the time no matter where she's going or is that a just a secret corridor specifically between her bedroom and her uncle's her father's office i think she has multiple of them Unless it just appears. With all different stickers. I don't know. Because there's another one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the same. If she can make it go where she wants it. Or if it she's just got a couple that are designated just to her. Which is kind of weird. I feel like it's more of like an intention thing. Like it is like a portal. Mm. More than a tunnel. Where she can kind of direct where she wants it to go. And at that point, I she... just thought that it was a bit strange because she didn't just do a portal directly from her bedroom. She, they still had to walk to a specific point to be able to open the portal. Yeah, maybe 
Hmm. May, like yeah. like I said, maybe 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 it's more of a an an intention thing because I'm sure it takes a lot of like power for her to to summon a portal. So or have you have you read any of the 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 uh, dark materials by Philip Pullman? No, I've only seen the um, the HBO. So the 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 subtle the subtle not the I say every time I say subtle it's obviously not a subtle Amber it's a subtle the subtle knife um, is a knife that can cut through the strands uh, of the like dimensions and open up yeah exactly different layers but yeah. he still has to find a weak spot right he can't just cut anywhere he still has to find a place where a window could be made so I was kind of think maybe thinking that she still had to find a place within the castle and she obviously knew where it was because she went straight there. Yeah. Um, that maybe that's where like the dimensions are a little bit thinner, like the veil between the worlds is yeah. slightly thinner. Especially maybe. the fact, we, I mean, that she's she's decorated it. Like it's been there all f- for a while. She's taken the time yeah. to actually go to that location and decorate it with crystals and stickers, which, by the way, a couple months ago when I received my initial um, merch box from uh, Entangled, they sent me a bunch of those stickers, of the stickers that were in Macy's Ooh. tunnel. So I've got That's a couple. Exciting. I've got a couple of them. Um, let's see. So they go to Finn's office, and one of the yes. notes that has disappeared... <laughs> I, I love how she wants to know if, like, what would happen if Cole bit her. And she's like, a gargoyle werewolf? A werewolf gargoyle? A weregoyle? A garwolf? I do not want to be a garwolf. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something that we've been joking this entire time. It's every time that there is two supernaturals, we could kind of, we blended the words and made them into something. I forgot that it actually happened in the book. <laughs> I think that that should be the episode title. I do not want to be a gar wolf. Okay, sold, the, sold. That's you guys I also, are. Um, I also love the fact that she's like, please don't call the police. <laughs> don't call the police. Yeah, that 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 would be the perfect thing to do with all these paranormals because I'm sure the police are are aware of all of this. Yeah, and then they go, yeah, we don't really do that here, especially especially if you didn't mean to do it. And I'm like, oh, so like Flint didn't mean to do it and Leah didn't mean to do it and Jackson didn't mean to do it. They they all just didn't mean to do it, so therefore they got off scot-free. <laughs> yeah, I think that their intentions were pretty clear. <laughs> it's like, okay, um, Uncle Finn, I think you need to reevaluate your school policies <laughs> on trying to murder people. Yeah. So they have no idea. They have no idea what's going on. They have no idea why this is happening. Uh, Finn says he's going to call in some experts on gargoyles because they mm-hmm. assume that this is just gargoyle thing. Like nobody thought yep. that that it might be Hudson doing this other than Grace, which she hasn't really said it out loud. She's kind of kept that to herself. But everybody else is just like, oh, you know, we haven't had gargoyles in, in forever and – you know, maybe this is just a gargoyle thing that that we're not aware of, that gargoyles go out and try to murder people in the middle of the night. So, yeah. Well, she uh, said that she thinks that her alter ego might have had reason to hurt Cole, but she didn't. I was yeah. like, yes, she did. Yeah, <laughs> she totally <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, um, and uh, Uncle Finn also says that he's going to kind of try and get it out of coal in some weird secret mystery way because apparently if him as an alpha werewolf lets slip that a girl beat him he would lose his position as alpha <laughs> i love how grace like she like steps up and she's like, like hey Oi. and and jackson's like no no that's that's what he would think he would say that. uh-huh <laughs> yeah sure jackson jackson the sexist yeah nob and uh, Grace, once again, she's starting to stand up for herself a little bit. Um, so they end up leaving Finn's office. So and- to, to be fair, though, if she did be an alpha werewolf, it would be hilarious. She is like five foot, teeny tiny, and is a gargoyle and she doesn't even know how to use her powers. <laughs> yeah, and, and Cole, he I mean, really, he has, he has it coming. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody... Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to be sad when they find out that something happened to his character. Like, oh, no. Yeah. 
Um, Say with Cam. Yeah, like Cam and Cole and Mark. They're all just meh. All the all the meh. Meh. all the all the wolves and and Cam. Cam's a he's a warlock though. Yeah. Um. So they just decide to go to class. Like Grace, yeah, again. Well, they want to make sure she has an education, Starla. Oh yeah, because that's totally been the priority in the past. I don't All know. Of a sudden, s- past several months, she's <laughs> she's finally going to get to go to class. But Jackson she wants to walk her, and she doesn't know why she's been switched over to uh, to physics of flight. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jackson's like, really. Like, you I really it, don't know why. I thought it was about airplanes. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I actually, I, I full on cracked up and laughed out loud when I read that line again today. I was like, really? <laughs> That's Uncle Phil is teaching know. physics of I flight thought, with his uh, little airplane. <laughs> it's all coming together, guys. We're finally getting those answers. I swear, we keep hearing about in these court uh, court teasers <laughs> about some betrayal. I'm telling you, it's Uncle Phil. We we asked you last week what job you would do if you graduated Catman. It's clearly everyone is going to be a pilot. Oh, yeah. We, except for that one person who said vampire nail technician, which... <laughs> it's an awesome what does that? What does that entail? Do you like... I hope everybody gets coffin nails. You get... You, I'm you really cl- sad we didn't share those. You clip a cuticle and then you're like, oh, hold on a minute. You know, like you get the little driplet of blood. It's like a little snack in the middle of your a work. A driplet. A driplet. <laughs> a little driplet. <laughs> so you took two notes on here that um I guess there's one more before that, but you took two notes that I assume are on the next chapter. So we'll we'll skip those. Yes. Um but yeah, Grace coming up with with that theory that maybe gargoyles just aren't into vampires because she starts <laughs> Kind of shying away from Jackson again. Um, yep. What I mean, what did you think w- the the first read through when she started doing this? Like, I thought she was just falling out of love with him. Like, I thought that it was one of those things where, like, she felt herself like falling out of love with him. So, have you ever been in a relationship with somebody who is overly tactile? too 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 intimate with you too touchy and actually yeah too touchy feely and it's not that you're not attracted to them and it's not that you don't necessarily find them sexually attractive in that way it's just sometimes it comes across a bit too needy mm-hmm. yeah and actually is a massive turn off I thought that that because because you you always put yourself in the main character's shoes, and I am not a very tactile person. I will never be the first to go for a hug. I don't like touching. Um, whenever anybody like rests their head on my shoulders, I I get like proper yeah. panic. Yeah, I hate it. And I thought, oh, maybe maybe she's just getting to the point where she's like, okay, I don't enjoy this, and public displays of affection were fun when it like first started but since my trauma i now have that like i don't want to be touched physically yeah yeah i i kind of felt the same way i felt it wasn't like she was falling out of love but it was just it was like too too much like too much all being piled mm-hmm. on i know that like when i'm anxious i don't i don't want to be touched i don't want to be i don't want to be gripped on tugged on even even like my my own like kiddo, if I'm like really anxious and she wants to hang all over me, I have to be like, hey, hey, you know, like calm down. Yep. I'm not a and, I'm not um, a jungle gym. Please don't climb me. <laughs> I don't know whether you've noticed, but it's always Jackson going in for the kiss. Yeah. It's never her her going and up on her tiptoes and trying to reciprocate. It is always Jackson going in. And I think she's starting to realize that either she is fallen out of love with him or she just doesn't crave him in the same way anymore. Oh, you she's, said the she's, word. She's not t- she's not talking about his bum anymore. She's, she's not. not. She's not talking about how gorgeous he is. She is very much not really thinking about Jackson in the moments where she's not with him, whereas in Crave she was. That's all she um, thought about. She wouldn't shut up yeah. about him. Now she's like, where was I for this four months? All I want to do is paint and 
talking about how she is not sure whether she can forgive Flint. Those those are like the main thoughts that she's had when she has been on her own. It's never, I can't wait to go to Jackson's Tower. She's mo- not made any reasons why she has to go to see him. I realise there's only been like 48 hours, but last week for her, she was making every excuse under the sun to go and see him. Yeah. And even even no, the not. last time he said like he was leading her to his tower. She's like, no, no, I, I need to go back to my room. Mm-hmm. Yep, and um, she actually said no to a date with him in his tower in favor of spending time with Macy, which is a very healthy thing. Yeah, absolutely. But she hasn't tried to rearrange that. No. And it's because she's she's probably just not into it anymore. I mean, she went through a horrific trauma. Yeah. Um, Not just before she went to Katmere, but also in, in the dungeons. She was beaten within an inch of her life. Right, and that's and that's all a week after coming to the school for the first time, learning that all these creatures are real, and all of that on top of the fact that her parents just died, which she just found out. One of her classmates is the one who murdered them in order to bring back a vampire that wanted to literally destroy the world, and now that vampire is missing. Like, really, really, mm-hmm. where is this therapist that they keep talking about arranging a meetup with? Like, where where is she? Because Grace yeah. Grace needs therapy. I, just, I think that she's gone through all of this and she's trying to... She knows that everybody else has had four months. Everybody else has had four months to get used to the idea that she is a gargoyle and get used to the idea that four months ago there was an attempted murder at the school and that Hudson has been brought back or what not brought back or whatever. She's literally had a matter of hours where essentially she was asleep. Yeah. And she hasn't had time to catch up yet. And no one has actually sat down, except for Macy. No one has sat her down and goes, okay, hit me with some questions because I'm sure you're brimming with them. Like, let us help you go through this. They've just kind of accepted that she's just going to be fine. Yeah. And she's clearly not. And I, Jackson seems to be okay with the fact that she's not willing to kiss him. But he doesn't seem to be too concerned about the fact that she probably needs to talk to someone. Yeah, he's not he's offering not really to offering have a, like a sit down no. date with her to just not talk. Not at all. Um, I like feel if if, if okay. I was his uh, if I was Jackson, I'd be like, okay, instead of going to classes, let's go to the library together. Yeah, he's not. He's like, yeah, go to class. Let's be normal. Yeah, it's like he's craving to go back to how things were, even though things obviously yep. aren't. Which you know, what my my thoughts are that um, it's almost like, and this is just me adding layers to a story that I'm already familiar with. I know the reason why she's feeling this way. I I know the answer, but if <laughs> I were you know going based on my first read through. It it's almost like Jackson was this band aid that she just kind of stuck over this gaping wound of everything else that happened to her: her parents dying, uh, everyone trying to kill her, her finding out that paranormals are real, um, her finding out about about Leah killing her parents. Um, all of this is just this huge gaping wound, and she p- tried to take this romance and kind of stick it over the hole, which. That works for a little while or a little while, but what happens after a while when you wear a band aid? It starts to peel off, and I think that that's what we're kind of seeing here. It's it's not just what we know to be true. I think that there's a little bit of a a hidden story beneath here where Tracy's trying to also educate young readers into knowing that yeah, when you are hurt, when you are feeling um, emotionally damaged, it can be easy to just stick a band aid on it called romance and you know, and, and try to immerse yourself in that dopamine rush. But the thing about new love is that those butterflies, they're, they don't last very long. Um, and after a while, you yep. do have to return to reality and start living in the here and now. And that's what she's doing. She's realizing, okay, the most important thing isn't Jackson anymore. Like there are way bigger problems taking place that we mm-hmm. need to sort through. And unfortunately, um, nobody's really giving her the support that she needs and i they're trying i I don't think it's that they're not that they don't want to i don't even i don't think jackson doesn't want to 
no one knows how, and nobody's really considering how this could be affecting her on top of everything else that's happened. No, and and all they've all they've said from the beginning is how much of Hudson is the BBE. He's the big bad evil. He is the most terrifying creature on the world. But no one's trying to reassure her that it's okay that he is still missing. Yeah, and and, and, and saying and see, we'll figure the, it she, out isn't enough. Yeah, she's the only one that seemed to be like actually concerned of like where is he? Did I kill him? It, did I did I put him somewhere and now I can't remember where I is? Did I murder him and I'm so traumatized by the fact that I killed someone that I now can't remember? She's the only one that's going through all of these sort of thoughts. And no one else really gives a shit. I and don't think, I think that worrying. everyone, I think they're all just as concerned as she is, but their thought is let's not bring it up to her. She's been through enough. Let's just keep it, let's just pretend that everything's fine, everything's good. But she knows that that's a load of bullshit. She knows that she's being bullshitted right now. And that's, that's the biggest mm-hmm. problem is that she knows that they know that this problem is very serious. But everybody's like, you know what, we'll figure it out. It's fine. And that's not an answer. We'll figure it out is not an answer. Not if it's not backed up by how you're going to figure it out. If it's like, oh, we're going to figure it out, but for now, go to class and pretend that everything's normal, that's not going to stop what's going on inside her head. So, Nope. And you'd think like the first thing that any sort of warlock or witch would try to do is go, okay, let's try and see if we can find a memory spell. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, no one's done anything or like tried to bring in the therapist for some regression therapy or hypnosis or any of those things to help her try and remember it. I feel like they're like, well, if you don't remember it and he's not here, everything is fine. Yeah. But we don't want to know where he is because at this point, like, ignorance is bliss. Then we'd have to deal with it. Let's yeah. Have- do you want to go ahead and get into spoilers so we can actually dive deeper into this? Well, there's there's the bits where um, Amka is um, talking about Ludez for the first time. Well, so that's, that's in the that's next. Quite exciting. Yeah, that's in the next chapter though. We didn't read that far. I didn't read Did that we far. Not? No, I stopped. Are you, you sure? Yes, you read an extra chapter. Oh, you read two twenty four, not twenty four, including. Yeah. Okay. You. You want to change it in the Aww. notes? Yeah, I stopped. Aww. I stopped it. Maybe the monster is me. That's quite exciting. Aww. <laughs> well, that'll be a good s- that Lou Dares next week, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that you that you read that chapter. I mean, I knew you read it, but I didn't know. We were <laughs> no doing- wonder. I, so I I read one more chapter past that. As well. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. I guess we'll I guess we'll start that next week because I, I do want to talk about Lou Dares. Well, my job is done. <laughs> well, I want to talk about Lou Dares next week, but I also um, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll save it. I'll save it for next week. Okay, okay. Because okay. that's I feel like that's like that is the Quidditch of this book. Like it is it is its own whole big thing. I bang. Yeah, I feel like that's the the most of this book is spent figuring out Lou Dares. Um, so I'm excited to give that like its own attention. But d- let's go ahead and jump into spoilers because I've got so many theories that I want to share. So, uh, woo, okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and start? Because I know that you have a lot more than I do, and then I'll hit you with my big shebangs. Okay. So, um, my th- I don't remember much about the reasons why Hudson either took over Grace's body or the things happened whilst Grace doesn't remember. But I was like, did Cole like bleed out because Hudson was fighting as Hudson would and he bit him? And, yeah, <laughs> and I'm... like, I was like, that's not, cause that's not Grace's fighting style, but he also can't do any of the normal vamp stuff because he is physically in grace's body but the one thing that at his disposal would probably be her teeth uh, well okay there's that but there's also when he is like kind of physically manifested not not physically but you know when when he's walking around and she's actually conscious of the fact that he's walking around with her, which he is right now. He is walking mm-hmm. around with her. And we know that because in one of the bonus chapters, when he realizes that she doesn't, that she is not able to hear him, he is walking after her through the, through the halls. 
and he's like trying to talk to her and she can't hear him. So he is not just existing in her head. He is able to walk around, but he's just kind of like a ghost. He, she just can't hear him. So my thought is in, um, later chapters, he punches the wall and, and his fist actually goes through it, right? Mm hmm. So maybe he was Ooh. able to attack Cole as himself. Yeah. And maybe she, you know, maybe that's one of the reasons why she wasn't as covered in blood because it wouldn't make sense for it to just be, I don't know, hands and stomach. She would also have it in her mouth. She would have it in her mouth. Yeah. She didn't have a weapon. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe he was, because I was also thinking like, if anybody would step in to protect Grace, it would be Hudson. Yeah. And he's always there with her because he can't, he can't physically leave. He is there in, in her head. Um. So if she was like happily painting and Cole just happened to be waiting there as an ambush, the one person that would be there would, would, would save her would be Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking is, is she, she, the reason that the blood wasn't soaked all the way through, the reason that it was only on her stomach and hands, maybe would she, she, what about the memory? Would he be able to persuade her to forget? But why would he want to? I, I'm not sure. Also, I thought. Also, I thought that mind mind control or or, or um, spells and things like that don't work on her. Oh, uh, I think only certain certain things don't work on her. There are certain types of magic that don't work on her, but not all types of magic, because okay. she can't. Like she's not affected by uh, glamours and things. But then there are other things like during Ludares, all all of that affects her. Going through portals that mm -hmm. affects her. Um, I, I think it's types of magic. I think that there's a difference in types of magic okay. that do and don't affect her. And there's just certain types that don't. Yeah, I was kind of like wondering that like if it was a Hudson stepping in thing, she wouldn't see that. Yeah. She would just see Cole getting beat up <laughs> just without anybody there. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe and, um, maybe, maybe she's still he, painting. She's just standing there, la 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 la, painting while like, Oh, I didn't add any red. <laughs> but yeah, may maybe that happened, and then Hudson realizing that she's freaking out, he sends her to bed and tells her to forget. But then, wouldn't he have to then be visible? I don't. I don't remember what happens. Yeah. And it's driving me crazy. And I just kept wanting to read because, like, it's so intriguing. And I'm like, I don't remember what happens. And therefore, I want to remember the bits that I don't remember. And I'm guessing that she feels exactly the same. Poor girl. Yeah. I wish I had time. I, I, we should have started rereading the full, like, series in time for court but at the same time the thing is i could we we could we just wouldn't be able to schedule in a podcast for yeah. every single chapter because by the time we would record we would forget and we'd have to reread it again I, my, my thing is that if i if i have to dedicate myself this week to doing that i will not have time for anything else <laughs> so i think i'm just gonna read court i i might i might skim covet before we start and just kind of give myself like just just a refresh on where we left off but Tr tracy's pretty good about you know kind of going in and describing like you know previously where... on <laughs> exactly exactly so i know that See, you... i would i would love to read um love to recover again and i think that i probably could but at the same time i'd feel like i've missed out by not reading crush <clears throat> oh by not finishing it yeah yeah, like I'm like okay, but then I don't want to do it three times. Does that make sense? Yeah, like three, like three times in a row. Like if, if, yeah, if there was like a year in between, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But yeah, consecutively. Because there's, there's a re there's a reason why you kind of feel jealous of anybody reading something for the first time, and it's because you already know what's going to happen. Yeah. So therefore, you you either anticipate it because you know just how what just what's going to happen, and you start getting that panic feeling because you know what's going to happen. But at the same time, the other way around is that you have all these mixed emotions, like like in, in The Court of Thorns with Tamlin, everybody hating Tamlin and then realizing that he wasn't hers. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. Like you, you imagine reading that for the first time again and going, ugh, 
yeah. Tomlin. I, I know. I'm rereading it right now with with hubby. We're actually we're going to finish Mist and Fury. We read chapter 55 last night. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> rereading it. It's it's almost like I'm excited knowing that he's reading these things for the first time. So I'm like laughing, mm-hmm. you know, as I'm reading things. But L- let me let me know what he thinks of the ending with um, Tamlin, the betrayal. Yeah. I will. I will. He 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 <laughs> he liked he liked chapter fifty five. I was like I was surprised. He was like, "Yeah." Is I he thinking of bringing paint into the bedroom? <laughs> no, I told him I'm like that. That that was anxiety is for that, me reading that, that thing. Hard limit. Nope. <laughs> no mask. Like in your hair. Awful. Awful. No. But anyway, um. So I know that you made a couple notes about Amka. Do you want to yes. go? I mean, I know that those are more for the chapters that we didn't cover in this episode. But I mean, if you want to, if you want to, because everybody knows, like now we've got people. I'm even seeing it in the wolf pack group. Everybody is now suspicious of Amka now that we've brought it <laughs> up. Like it, it's and I that, feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody, that's become the new theory, and our T theory as well has become like the standard theory that everyone is clinging to so anytime Man, we introduce nerds. a theory it becomes like the, the standard theory so do you want to well, share that's that exciting yes okay. so um grace instead of going to her class ends up going to the library to do some research and amka starts talking about how grace is being really negative about gargoyles because they're 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 able to do a lot more cooler stuff than just turn to stone. And when Grace asks, okay, like what? Like getting actually excited that somebody else is able to say, and she went, Well, you'll soon find out. And it's like, really? Like this this is an opportunity to 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 actually be the the one person to tell her what being a gargoyle could entail. And instead you're being really vague. And I feel like she's deliberately keeping Grace in the dark, wants her to be naive and clueless for a little while longer whilst Cyrus prepares like his army because he probably couldn't go up against a gargoyle because she is the first in a thousand years and he did get rid of gargoyles for a reason and it was because they outmatched him. And um, I also think that like, she then starts to get her to compete in a deadly game. She's like, you should you should compete in Ludares as a gargoyle in front of everybody when I thought that gargoyles were supposed to be kept secret and down oh, on the down low. Oh yeah. And and it's and it's one of those things where Grace literally has no idea what Ludares is. She has no yep. idea how to play it. She literally just or gets how to be a gargoyle. Yeah. She just gets thrown into this. And maybe the whole yep. plan with with Cyrus doing the the main Ludares competition, that was all part of the grand scheme all along yep. for Grace to learn how to play at least enough to to be confident enough that she felt like she could do Cyrus's little challenge and then for it to all fall apart. Yep. And I don't know whether you noticed, but when um because it's it was so such a brief mention that before Amka starts talking about Ludes, she starts talking about the table of objects behind her, and it is the objects like the bloodstone and things like that. She has them out oh. on a table. Um, and she's yeah, she starts talking about how they're like the like tokens uh, that you would win in a Ludes competition and that sword that's where the sword is that hudson where she, where grace um while she's doing her gargoyle research she disappears she she he takes over her mind again and gets the sword right see i don't know because <laughs> or knife knife or sword the, or i can't remember the next the next bit is that Amke says oh head on over to that table i've prepared every book on gargoyles possible for you and then gives her two drinks from a fridge behind her. Grace needs to stop accepting drinks from people. Yeah. Because the next thing she ha- like she literally has her drink, she starts drinking it, puts her headphones in to start listening to her playlist, and then goes blank and yeah. wakes up in the casting tower. But Hudson's the one who takes over. I mean, we know for sure that Hudson took over her mind at that point because he admits to it. So... 
I, I am, I'm not saying that I'm not suspicious of the drinks, but I'm wondering what role they play if we already know that Hudson is the one who took over her mind. What could the drinks have been doing? Like, I am, I am 100% sure that Amka is doing something sketch. I just, Mm-hmm. I've got all Although these. I was, I'm just thinking that why, like, would Hudson have known that the drink was something, and they, he took over her body to stop her drinking more? Because he wouldn't have been able to do anything else. He wouldn't have been able to stop her drinking them. He wouldn't have been able to stop any effects of the drink. And also, he would have seen if anything happened with Amka after she. He he, he could have been looking at Amka whilst Grace was taking that first sip and seeing her like with that success face, like yes, she's drinking it. Like, I, I don't know, but there's something weird about the fact that Amka had those drinks and then all of a sudden Hudson took over her body. Why would he have waited? Why wouldn't he have waited until she was asleep again or or, or during a time where it wasn't so obvious what he was doing? She was literally in the middle of a library. And then he was like, yep, yeah, this is a great time to suddenly take her control of her body and go and do my chores. I feel like he would have told her, though. Like later, because he did come clean about I don't everything. Know. I don't know because he didn't. He still doesn't hasn't told her about the green string. He hasn't told her how to go full gargoyle. He hasn't told her how to go to like actual gargoyle place or how to come back out of it. I love I love him. He is my husband. But why are people being so secretive? Yeah. I suppose it makes a good story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If everybody told everybody everything day one, they'd be like, oh, well, that was fun. Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as compelling. And then we wouldn't be sitting here doing an entire podcast mm-hmm. about it. But yeah, so- no, I just I'm just like, oh, this there was too many things happening that all of a sudden Grace then wakes up somewhere else again. Yeah. And she really struggles in the next chapter. She really struggles to wake up. Um, She has Amka is also in the room for some reason. Uh, Macy, Uncle Finn and Jackson all show up to try and help her to, to wake up. Yeah. Why is Amka there? Did she follow her all the way to the casting like tower? In, in which case, how did she get that far? So additional Amka theory that I have, um, not not really a theory, but just something I sorted out, like, or, or picked out. Because Tracy has this really good way of throwing in a line that you would just skim right past, not thinking anything of it. And then it ends up being something huge later on, and you wouldn't even catch it unless you were rereading the series. We've, we've noticed that several times during this reread. So... When they first go to Macy's secret sticker tunnel, Grace makes it a point to say that Macy and Amka have the same aesthetic. And I wonder if there's anything there. I'm not saying that like Amka's Macy's mom or anything, because I have other theories about that. But I'm wondering if there's anything, why would she bring that up? Like, oh, they have... It's just one of those things where we already know that the library is covered in stickers. We already know that Macy's tunnel is covered in stickers. There's no reason to state that they have the same aesthetic other than to insert Amka's name into a moment which otherwise wouldn't call for it. So I'm wondering if there is anything attached to the fact that she said something like that or that maybe Macy was the one who decorated the library. Because it's just such, the stickers is such a random thing. Like when I read, I mean, there's a lot of random things about this book, but the stickers were a really random thing. Wild theory. Okay. Seatbelt on. What if they're the same person, just from different points? What if Macy had to go back in time as an adult and make sure that the things that were happening had to happen in that at that point so she she couldn't tell grace how to become a a gargoyle because maybe she was macy the whole time i was like trying to see if like macy and i was like is there like an anagram yeah no no i did the same with the anagram kind of thing but i'm like well there are two letters similar (laughs) (laughs) okay okay so 
That's they a, don't look remotely alike. No, other than but the Macy fa- can change her appearance. In the Crave game, in chapters, Macy's hair is blue, and Amka's hair is blue. But Amka is darker skin. She's uh, she's in the game. She almost looks Latina, but I'm not sure. And I don't think she's ever described. I don't think her skin she color. Was is... Native America. She was oh, Native American. Oh, she's Native American. Is she... she was um, Inuit or whatever. Oh, she... okay. Then that's. I can't remember the tribe name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. So that wouldn't make any sense. That that would, when they do the the crave um, when they did the crave game, there were a lot of like in like Macy having blue hair. There were a lot of little inconsistencies mm-hmm. there. Um, I think that they probably just got a synopsis of the book and were expected to make a game from it. But um, yeah, okay. So uh, more theories. I'll I'll save the Jackson theory. I'll <laughs> do that since we've, we're... we've not stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I had a lot. So Remy and Macy's uh, theory. What if they have the same mom? What if Macy's mom? See, that was... was that was thrown up, but then I was like, okay, math wise doesn't work out because remy is older than macy how old is he he's not that much older but he's like 20 25 i think okay let me let me go into our i have the bonus chapters and in (laughs) witch's court let me get the name of macy's mom we do get the name of macy's mom in witch's court I'm just I'm just thinking that if Rowena Foster. Remy was born in the prison. Then she would have had to have been locked up at that time. Yeah. That that wouldn't yeah. have made sense. You're right. You're right. Rowena, He's definitely older. Rowena Foster. I'm trying to like think if there's All any witches are called Rowena. Rowena, yeah, that's a that's definitely a witch's name. <laughs> Rowena Foster, yeah. So okay. I definitely thought that she was at the prison when we were going into the um into the prison. I was like, oh, I bet Macy's mom is in here because that's the kind of place where somebody just goes to disappear and is never heard of again. Um, I can't think for a second, no matter what my childhood was like, shitty parents, parents just don't do that. Yeah, um, not for any reason they would just disappear um and if she did just disappear kind of like um in uh, treasure planet with uh jim hawkins's dad just is like yeah he walked away and never came back and i was like oh and it was never addressed he never found him again it was just part of the story but i feel like it was such a throwaway comment halfway through crush that i was like this has got to be important it wasn't like she just was a piece of shit and just left I feel yeah. like something happened to her. So I have the very last bit of witch- witch's court from the f- from Covet, not the new ones. So I'm just gonna. I'm just. You haven't read these yet, right? No. Okay. Still so no. <laughs> I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you this little bit at the end. So, uh, Cillian okay. is Grace's dad. Just just to fill in the blanks there, okay. and this is from Grace's mom's perspective. Um, right now they are in the forest that Grace, remember she talks about like the forest and how much she loved playing in the forest when they go to the giants, Mm -hmm. like she has that flashback. So the flashback is of this forest and she, I think she's like six, five or six or something. She's really young. Maybe she's a little older than that, but she's super young and she's spinning around in some flowers and all these flowers start blooming around her. And then she flies up in the air. So, uh, let's see. He breaks off as Grace stops mid-spin. For just a second in front of our horrified eyes, she turns to stone. It's only for a second, but we both see it as clear as day. It worked, Cillian whispers, as he races across the last few feet that separate us. Oh, dear God, it worked. Terror rips through me as the truth comes crashing down on me. My Grace, my precious, precious Grace is a gargoyle, the first to live in a thousand years. The horror of what that means floods through me as Cillian picks her up and spins her around. His terrified eyes meet mine because he knows what I know. There are those in our world who would stop at nothing to control her. Desperation rakes through me with razor or razor sharp claws as I fumble in my pocket for my phone. Once I've got it, I dial the only person I know who might be able to help us. The only person I know who can help me protect my daughter, Rowena Foster. As the phone rings and rings, I pray we're not too late. 
And that's the that's the end of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so So either right. So Macy's mum knew that Grace was a gargoyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She calls Grace's mom calls Macy's mom. So Macy's mom was aware. And then she disappears around the same time because Macy said when she was about mm-hmm. that, about the same age that Grace was, you know, I'm, I'm anywhere between, I think she was like seven, eight, maybe 10, but it was really young, which Macy says that her mom left when she was about that age, right? Nine, eight, nine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was around that same exact time. Unless unless Macy's mum, Rowena, has gone to find, kind of like Alice did. She's just like, yeah, bye. Yeah. In the end of uh, Breaking Dawn, she's like, yeah, I'm going to go and get some answers, but I'm not going to tell anybody where I've gone. It just makes me look like a coward that I've just left. Um, but then she comes back with the very thing that saves the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I... Hmm... There's not enough here. There's just, there's not enough here for us to build a good, like, conclusive. That does, that does negate the whole theory that the parents are not her parents. Unless they're just talking about her as if they are her parents, which which happens again. Like, if you adopt a child, it, it's not that that child is any less yours. You still refer to it as right. your child, your grace. Yeah, and I had the theory that that her mom was a gargoyle, but reading that when her mom her mom specifically says the first to be born in a thousand years, unless her mom is over a thousand years old, which totally could could be true. We don't know how gargoyles age. I don't know. Um, I have one last theory though, and this one's going to ruin a lot of people's days, and it's going to probably ruin. Well, it, it probably won't ruin yours. You don't <laughs> like Jackson that much, but. I no. have a theory, and we're going to call it evil oh, ja- siblings. Evil Jackson yeah. theory. Evil Jackson theory. I have a theory out of you know this. This is probably not true. I'm not basing this off of anything. This is a theory for the future. Um, what if it turns out that when Jackson had his soul ripped apart? He started going evil, and there's just this void of a void of a soul. And then Nuri sacrificed her heart to give to Jackson. But what if this makes him more powerful, and he ends up being the ultimate bad guy in the story? And we have to deal with with Hudson killing his brother since he, since Jackson killed Hudson originally, and it's like this ultimate like showdown where Jackson switches sides because he's able to turn into this just crazy powerful weapon of mass destruction now having his heart completed by a dragon and we never do get to have our Flint um, and Jackson love story like we hoped. I hope that doesn't happen (laughs) because I feel like our theory is better. Yes. That that actually his soul was broken, but having the dragon heart fixed it is a much nicer, well-rounded. But then at the same time, I love the books where no one ends up happy. Not no, like not that everybody ends up happy, but there are like there are things that are like loose ends that not everything is well-rounded. Not everybody is happily ever after because that's not real. That's not real life. So therefore, I I, I, I I enjoy those books and I enjoy those movies. Um like the the movie uh, Don't Look Up. Like everybody either hated it or loved it, and I love the fact that it just ended on a shit note. <laughs> it's a lot of movies like that. It's like, oh <laughs> Um I just yeah, I, I'm hoping that not everything is tied up because then it's like, oh, yeah, and that would be, that's just me thinking, like, if she wanted to go, if Tracy wanted to go, like, George R. R. Martin on us, like, that would be the way that I would go if I really wanted to, like, mess everybody up. And that's, that's, like, I know that everybody's going to be like, no, I don't want that theory to be true. So. Well, do you want to go into fan questions? Yes. Okay. Do you want me to read them this time? I yes, so. you read them. Um, yeah. Are you? Do you want to do the? Uh, do you want to also have the answers up or? 
Yeah, I'll have the answers up. I've got, okay. I've got them up here. Right, so the first question is, you wake up in the morning covered in somebody else's blood. Who do you call? Who are you going to call? All right. Um, I, who would I call? My husband, if I was in this mm-hmm. universe, I would, I would definitely mm-hmm. call him because, you know, it's, it's like that would, that would be one of those moments of, um, help me hide the body, you know? And, and I think if anybody could help you hide a body, it would be yes, your husband. He would. He's very, um, <laughs> he's very, um, he's a critical thinker. He can figure things out quite easily. He can, uh, he's also able to like, he, he knows exactly like technology wise, he knows exactly which messages to delete and how to delete them and make sure that they never find again. Yeah. He's, he's, he, and he's also like a survivalist. Like he knows, he he's watched like every video there is on like how to survive with only like a stick and a paper clip like he could figure <laughs> it out so i'm sure he could he could figure something out um so yeah i would i would probably call him if i as long as it was like in this in this world and i'm assuming your husband would be or my you would call my husband wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> the thing is the moment that i call someone i like my brain is like well it's going to be recorded it's going it's going to be recorded what am i going to do I am very much a panic thinker. Um, and as much as I would think like I could call my husband, I don't think my husband would think rationally like me. He thinks rationally like, okay, where do we hide the body? And I'm like, yeah, but we don't even know whether there is a body yet. Calm down. <laughs> Jump into conclusions. And also, even if there is a body, who says that I killed it? Yeah. I think I'm a very honest person and I get scared of lying to the authorities. Um, and my first instant response would probably be call the police yeah and that sounds really lame but genuinely i am the most absolute wet lettuce when it comes to authorities ever and i'm like yes i could call my husband and i know that my husband would be there for me whether i did it or i didn't do it he would hide the body with me he would help me find a rug to roll the body up in <sighs> like we would do this we would do, we would we would get rid of it my other friend Alice, she has watched so many murder documentaries with me that we genuinely probably probably could like commit the best murder. Like we would we would perfect murder. We would never be caught. Cool. Yeah. Or do you, do you ever this, drive past like a patch of grass like out in the middle of nowhere and think like oh that would be that's where you worry about? No, nobody would look there. Yeah. I but think at the same time, that. I think that myself, I would tr- I would only trust myself knowing who i am what i am capable of and knowing that there is no way that i would have killed someone uh so i don't think that i would be scared to call the police i think that i would be like if anybody can help me it's them i wouldn't touch anything i would keep like the clothes on that i was like i woke up with and i was like look arrest me i you can you can find me completely innocent in a few hours i don't mind i will stay in this cell (laughs) as long as i and myself know that i am telling the truth then i know that i'm safe but the moment that i call like a lawyer or bring my husband into it they're willing to lie for me and that makes me uncomfortable i don't want anybody to ever have to lie to me so then i just I start panicking because I'm like, okay, I've now got somebody else in on this and I have to, I have to lie well enough to not just protect myself, but somebody else and I can't lie. Yeah. And, and, you know, our justice systems are very different too in America versus, uh, Mm -hmm. versus, I I mean, anywhere in the world, everybody's justice system is very, very different. So I think that, um, there's I more think f- that the, the worst thing you can do, if you have done something, the worst thing you can do is try to get away with it if you've not done it properly. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I say I would call my husband, but we would likely immediately, that would be my first call. Second call would probably be yeah. be the cops if I knew that I didn't do it. If it was like, oh, yeah, I, I killed somebody, then yeah, that, because that's there, different. There could, but- have been, there could be much more terrifying reasons for you to be covered in blood other than the fact that you've murdered someone and not remembered it. There could genuinely be like the worst thing possible. And actually it wasn't, it wasn't a stranger. It was someone you knew, like surely you would want to know like what happened. So you would get people involved that could actually help you. 
And the moment that you come across and say, look, I don't know where this blood has come from. I need you to help me figure this out. I don't remember anything from last night. I am giving you all the evidence you could possibly need from me right now so that we can fix this. The moment that you start trying to cover it up and wash yourself and hide your clothes, that then makes you start looking guilty. And the the punishment is more severe because it looks worse. Yeah. What did fans say? I know a couple people said Hudson. Hudson, I saw, Hudson, I saw. Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Oh, Macy, uh, my mum, this woman would make do anything in her power to keep me safe. Uh, Uncle Finn, my best friend, Cherish. I think I like I would probably call my best friend because I know she would she be like, right, this is what we're doing. Right. Here's step one, <laughs> step two, step three. <laughs> but I think that's because she's watched so many murder documentaries. Yeah. There are many, many other things that I would never call her for advice for. Um Macy, she's the real definition of ride or die. Um <laughs> Hudson or Macy, my mum, no, Hudson. He'd help me hide the body, right? I'm calling Jackson, my bestie, Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Someone from experience. Uh, I think I would be freaking out too much to call anybody. <laughs> my boyfriend, he always stays calm when I panic. The nurse, to make sure it's not some freak thing. <laughs> <laughs> you bled out of your belly button. Yeah. I would be speechless and then keep it a secret. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. All right. I, I, I think that that probably you should just take a few minutes to kind of ch firstly check over yourself to make sure that it's definitely not from you. Then give your house a once over to make sure that the body's not still with you. And then probably call the one person that would make you calm. Not say anything to them on the phone. Just say, like, I need you to come over. I'm freaking out a little bit and I and I need you to help me calm down. Don't give them any reason if they do tap your phone and or get the phone records that they are suspicious because they're going to they're the first thing that they're going to ask you is why did you call someone else and not the police first and you go i needed i needed my rock and i needed the person that keeps me safe but i live with my husband so he's here it's fine i don't need to call anybody so therefore no issues <laughs> yeah call that, Can you tell I've been thinking about this a lot? <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got like a full action plan ready. Um, I think it's because I have that fear of authority. So therefore my brain is like every worst case scenario, I've already got an action plan for it just in case it does happen. Because the last thing that I want to do when the police come to investigate anything, even if I'm innocent, is for me to burst into tears as if I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Because I will. I will absolutely turn into a wet lettuce. So the next question, I'm so surprised by the answers. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to? So the next question is, do you trust Amke? And obviously we, we don't. We we don't. Um, And I'm quite surprised by the answers too. Yeah. Um, It's not unanimous, but it's also not 50-50. So we've got 76 votes for yes. 77 now. votes for no. What so, is that percentage? It's 77 for yes, 44 for no, and that equals out to 64% do trust her and 36 don't. The mind boggles. Yeah, most people trust her. <laughs> I don't trust her. Tracy, <laughs> as Tracy's. Far as I can throw her. Yeah, guys, Tracy's, she's, I'm watching her drag you all along. You, she's dragging you guys along and you're you're mm -hmm. you're just you're you're drinking the kool-aid right now like i'm serious if, if, if the betrayal comes from anybody else i will be outraged yeah this is my i am I gonna die on this else. on this hill yeah like macy absolutely no way flint, flint no way i don't think he could he would never survive another betrayal like that um even the people that i did not trust to begin with like flint's mother I did not trust her. She did the thing that was stupid and then kind of redeemed herself. There's no way that she would do that again so soon. Remy, no. Calder, no. Mackie, no. There's no one else. Mackay. There's no one else that a betrayal would mean that much. Other than Jackson, which, you know, that's like a, 
that that theory was just a crazy one. So that would, it, it has that would to be, be that would be that would be heartbreaking. That would be a, like a oh, I'm really sad. Yeah, not like a you bitch. Yeah, and that's and that's what I think is going to happen. It's going to be a how dare you moment when Amka does. I'm I'm serious, guys. This is this is how it's going to go down. And <laughs> if we're wrong, you can all. Send us messages on Crave Series Aesthetic saying, Neener, 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 you were wrong. But I swear, it <laughs> neener, was neener, neener. neener, Neener, Neener. It was Anka. She did it. And yep. Grace has been drinking poison tea. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's either that or that one werewolf teacher that has <laughs> He's disappeared. Yeah. And the. It ain't Uncle Phil. But oh, I forgot. If we do have another theory, and it could be Heather. Heather Werecrab, yes. Yeah. Heather Werecrab or Ampke, annoying librarian. We need to um, come up with, we need to come up with a a, a name for her. Amka the, nothing rhymes with Amka. Well, Heather Werecrab doesn't exactly rhyme. <laughs> <either. laughs> yeah, but it rolls off the tongue, the tongue well. Amka the evil me. The lie. The librarian. librarian. Yeah, the li- li- the librarian. The librarian. Amka the librarian. Okay, guys. <laughs> you heard it from us first. Hashtag Amka the librarian. Start using it all over the socials. <laughs> we'll be looking for it. We'll be we'll be, yep. we'll be t- 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 s- snap chatting, f- uh, Twitter tweeting, uh, Twi- Twitter tweeting, Twitter tweeting. TikTok and uh, <laughs> in, Insta Grumman. hashtag. And <laughs> I sound so old right now. <laughs> All right, let's let's wrap this up because I have to pee so bad, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, thanks for listening to our crazy theories. Let us know on Crave Series Aesthetic uh, what you think about our theories. And next week, like I said, we will have court in our hands but we are going to be covering crush um the the next few chapters and then the episode after that we will go into court Mm -hmm. yeah i'm excited i'm excited too all right guys thanks so much for hanging out and we will see you next week Bye -bye. bye bye